I uh, started school in 1955 in a little town on Cape Cod called Chatham. Yeah, so many of you have probably been to Chatham. It, well, back then it was a very simple, it was called, you know, we used to call it a, a drinking town with a fishing problem. <laughs> and, and, uh, uh, um, and, and, uh, uh it was not a sophisticated community. So uh, I, here I show up for first grade, age six, and um, I'm supposed to learn how to read. Well, I couldn't do it. It was phonics, you know, sounding out the words apple and that kind of thing. I, it, it didn't compute with me. I couldn't do it. Well, back then, you know, September, October, November, I'm struggling with reading. They didn't have specialists in this. Your diagnosis was perfectly obvious. You didn't need an evaluation. You're stupid. You know, that, that, was, that was the diagnosis, you know, and, and uh, the treatment plan was try harder, you know, and, and, uh, and uh, they might have, you know, had advanced methods of helping you try harder, like ridiculing you or putting you in the corner, you know, and, then, and that didn't work. Well, you're very stupid, you know, and, and this is the way of the world, you know, and, and uh, well, I was lucky. I had a first grade teacher named Mrs. Eldridge. She's in heaven now, but uh, she knew there was more to little boys and girls who couldn't learn to read than their being stupid. And there were better ways to help them than, than to ridicule them or punish them. And what would she do? Well, at reading period, we'd be sitting at these little round tables taking turns reading out loud, C spot run, you know. And it come to be my turn, I'd stammer, I'd stutter, I couldn't do it. Well, she would simply come over and sit down next to me. And uh, she was a very short lady, very, very plump. And, uh, and I remember it was back when old ladies used to wear lots of powder. She was old. And, and, uh, uh, and, and she would come over, and, and she'd sort of arrive like a sugar donut, you know, because <laughs> all this powder would be sprinkling around. And, 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 uh, uh, and, and, and she'd put her arm around me, so there'd be her <laughs> forearm there, and my little head here, and this enormous cushion right here. <laughs> and she would hug me into that. And I would feel so safe. And as I would stammer and stutter, none of the other kids would laugh at me because I had the mafia sitting next to me. <laughs> and that was my treatment plan. That was my IEP, Mrs. Eldridge's arm. But it was brilliant. It was really all she could do, but it was all she needed to do. See, that arm took out of the equation what is, in my opinion, by far the most dangerous learning disability, which is fear. Fear is what holds people back in life. To the extent that you don't realize your potential, it's usually because of fear. You're afraid to try. You shut down. You avoid. You, do, you put your efforts into not looking stupid. Well, because of that old lady's arm, I didn't feel afraid. I was, I was OK making mistakes. and, and uh, uh, I actually looked forward to reading period. And that's pretty amazing to take a six-year-old little boy and have him look forward to publicly demonstrating his incompetence every day, you know. <laughs> but I looked forward to that hug. And also, I didn't know it, the part of my brain that had a talent with words was able to begin to inch its way out ever so slowly. Now, by the end of the year, I was still the worst reader in the class. I have what we now call dyslexia. But, um, uh, uh, and so to this day, I'm a painfully slow reader. It takes me forever to read a book. But I majored in English at Harvard College and graduated with high honors while doing pre-med. So I, I learned to read well enough that I was able to make use of the talents I had. That never would have happened had I had a different first grade teacher. That's what I mean by connection to school, making school safe for you to be who you are. Whether it's a kid with a reading problem or a kid with a shyness issue or a kid who uh, farts too much, you know? To, making it safe for you to be who you are. Uh, that's what I mean by connection to school.